Good evening, my friends. Another wonderful Wednesday to share the Word of God with you. Uh, I'm excited, as always, to share our lesson with uh, the members of First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, uh, and certainly also with uh, our guest. Uh, we certainly continue to thank you for your committed uh, viewing. Uh, we certainly thank you for your comments, uh, your questions. Uh, it lets us know that you are being engaged, uh, certainly by our Bible study. Uh, and so I encourage you to continue uh, as you have questions, as you have comments. Uh, I'll certainly do my best, uh, certainly, to answer any questions uh, that I receive via email. Uh, but it lets us know uh, that you're tuning in, uh, that you are engaged. I uh, would encourage you, if you're viewing as well, uh, we'd like to keep track of where you are. Uh, if you could simply maybe type in the comments uh, what city, what state you're in, uh, it just helps us to know uh, who, is, who is watching uh, so that we can certainly give shout outs to you uh, around the country. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm focusing on the Gospel of St. John, uh, chapter 5, uh, those first, five, ver first nine verses, excuse me, uh, that focus uh, on uh, this sick man who was by, uh, by the pool. Uh, there's a question that Jesus uh, asked the man, and that question uh, is going to form the topic uh, of our Bible study, uh, and that is, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? It's a question that Jesus asked of this man who was sick uh, and sitting by the pool, uh, but by way of the Holy Spirit in Scripture, uh, it, my friends, is also a question that Jesus asked of you and I. Do we want to be made well? Uh, I'm not going to read all um, nine verses, uh, but I am just to set the context, uh, going to read verse 6. Uh, and seven from John chapter five. Uh, and it says, when Jesus saw him lying there and realized he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to get well? Uh, verse seven, sir, the disabled man answered, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, someone goes down ahead of me. Uh, again, John chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Uh, I'll call your attention to uh, refer uh, to the first nine verses of John uh, chapter 5. Just to set somewhat of a scene, uh, this was a very open public space near uh, what is called the sheep gate uh, or the sheep pool. Uh, from time to time, uh, the water would bubble up. Uh, and this was thought to be caused by some divine agency uh, or maybe even by a divine uh, angel. When the water bubbled up or the water was troubled or there was turbulence in the water, people believed that if a sick person immersed themselves in the pool or if they bathed in the pool, that this person uh, immediately after the turbulence or the troubling of the water, that they would be healed, they would be whole, they would be made well. So basically the sick uh, would gather in this area on a daily basis in very large numbers. Uh, there were also five porches that were built for their convenience. Uh, there was a man, the Bible says, who had been sick uh, for 38 years. We know that is a very long time, uh, but he had never been able to get healed, but yet he still waited. And so that sets context for what I read in verses 6 and 7. Uh, Jesus, uh, he saw the man uh, and he asked and posed a question, do you want to be made well? Do you want to get well? Uh, the man immediately began to make some excuses uh, as to why he had been coming there every day for a long period of time, uh, friends bringing him in the morning, uh, friends picking him up at night and taking him home. Uh, and in response to the question of Jesus about being made well, he said, well, I come here every day, uh, but someone always gets in front of me and takes my place. Uh, there is a similarity between the situation of this man and the situations that we face. We too are sick. We too uh, all have areas in our life where we need to be made well, we need to be made whole, uh, we want to be healthy, uh, we want to be restored. Uh, 
that can uh, mean uh, physical, it can mean mental, it can mean uh, emotional, uh, it can even be relational. We all have some area of our life where we want to be whole, we want to be made well, and Jesus is asking us the same question. And so, as Jesus asked this man the question, do you want to be made well? Uh, we all are looking for some special healing or some special power to make us whole again. Uh, we desperately need someone to come along and restore us to health. And so as we engage this story, uh, as we encounter the principles and the lessons that uh, the Lord is trying to teach us, uh, we need to take notice uh, of three or four facts uh, that can help us answer the question ourselves, do we want to be made whole? Do we want to be healthy? All of us do, but like this man, many of us are, are waiting, uh, still looking for our opportunity uh, to be made whole and be made well. So we first notice this, is that this man had a belief system in something. Whether it be magic, whether it be superstition, he believed in something. And my friends, all of us, we all place belief in someone or in something. For instance, uh, many of us trust, as we should, uh, and place a great deal of our trust in medicine uh, and in scientific technology. For instance, whenever we get sick, uh, we go to the hospital, we go uh, to the doctor, uh, the doctor uh, will then even prescribe some medication or say maybe we need surgery or we need some sort of therapy uh, in order to be made whole. Uh, by virtue of the fact that we go to the doctors or the fact that we trust in medicine and science uh, is an indicator that we have, at least on some level, uh, a belief uh, in the ability of medicine, uh, in the ability of science, uh, to make you and I whole. But beyond scientific and medical uh, trust, we even go beyond scientific uh, trust in medicine when it comes to what they can offer because there are many times when we are promised drugs that will cure worry, uh, promised drugs that will restore our confidence. And so we place a great deal of trust in the medical profession even in science. For instance, uh, and I'm, I'm meddling, many of us place trust uh, in medical science even when it comes to losing weight. We think there's some magical formula, there's some uh, magical diet, there's some magical pill uh, that can all of a sudden help us to be uh, healthy again uh, and even to lose weight. In fact, uh, many of us are praying maybe uh, for our weight to go away or praying for ourselves to be healthy. But what that indicates is that we place belief and trust in something and someone other than ourselves. And so in the text, we see the man came on a regular basis because he had a belief system. He had a belief system uh, in something. And that was that when the water was troubled, he would be healed. But guess what? What he believed in, uh, what he trusted in, was not able to make him whole uh, because he had been sick for 38 years, right? Uh, but he was still in his same condition and in his same situation. So we noticed that first. But the second thing we notice is this, is that he thought that uh, when the water was troubled and he did not get his healing, he found fault with other people found fault with other people. He came there every day looking for the water to be troubled. Someone always got in front of him. So he said, Jesus, yes, I want to be made well, but someone else always gets in front of me. Uh, how many of us uh, have still not been made well? We're still not whole because we find fault or we want to blame someone else, right? For our situation. In other words, self-pity uh, is always with us and self-pity is always self-defeating. Uh, many of us are dealing with envy. We are envious of someone else, uh, maybe having what we have wished for, uh, maybe having what we have prayed for, uh, maybe having received the breakthrough and the deliverance uh, that we want. But there are many of us 
who feel that, you know, someone else always gets all the breaks. They always get all the opportunities. Uh, everything uh, happens for them. But then we may go beyond uh, someone having all the blank breaks and saying, well, you know, someone else always gets what, what I want because they have more influential peers, uh, more influential friends who can open doors uh, and opportunities for them. We blame everything that goes wrong uh, in our life on any and everything but ourselves. But my friends, Jesus is wanting this man and wanting us to know that one of the steps towards our healing and our wholeness is for us to take ownership of our own situation. Uh, and taking ownership of our own situation, uh, taking ownership uh, of our own healing, uh, our own deliverance, uh, is not something that we hear often, but Jesus point blank asked this man the question, do you wanna be made well? Do you wanna be made whole? And he is asking you and I that same question on today. So we've noticed a couple of things. Uh, we have noticed that that this man, as well as us, we all have uh, a belief system in someone or something. We also notice and take note that there's something about our human personality that always wants us to place blame outside of ourselves, but we've got to take ownership. But then I'll notice uh, a third point uh, that I want to point out to you and I want you to take notice. And that is that quite possibly this man preferred his sickness. Quite possibly he preferred his situation. In other words, uh, he wanted to stay just as he was. Uh, he had been sick for 38 years. But notice, uh, this man had made a career of weakness. Now, you may say, well, how did I know he made a career? I say he made a career uh, because he had been coming 38 years. For 38 years, his friends brought him in the morning, picked him up late in the evening. Uh, that, that's more than just a season. Uh, that that's a career. And I find that many times, uh, many of us will make a career and a habit uh, out of our weaknesses. Uh, sometimes uh, the life that we're living, we're thinking is not too bad of a life, right? Uh, his friends, as I said, brought him in the morning, came back and got him at night. Remember the text said that there were five porches that were set up. The five porches or colonnades were set up for the sick folk who would come there every day, right? Uh, waiting to be healed. And so uh, there was a level of comfort that had been provided, right? To stay in their same situation. They came there every day, right? Made a career out of being sick. Uh, the city, the planning crew had provided five porches that helped block the sun from them during the day, right? If it started raining, it blocked the rain from coming uh, uh, on them and getting them wet. Uh, and so there was a level of comfort. Uh, it says there were a great deal of sick folk that came. So all of their buddies would come. So they could just sit there all day long, wallow in their sickness, right? Be protected from the sun, be protected from the rain, uh, and just uh, chop it up uh, with their buddies uh, all day long. Uh, they, 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 they literally sat there all day long. And so the question Jesus is asking, as I kind of lay the context, he said, uh, are you really anxious for a change to come in your life? You know, many of us give lip service to wanting to be transformed, to, to wanting our life to change. But when you really look at what we're doing, you realize we actually are our own enablers, right? Uh, to stay in our own current situation because we become very uh, comfortable in our plight. We like to talk about it. Uh, we like to get pity from others because of our plight and our situation. Uh, but, but, but are we really anxious for a change? Uh, and Jesus, like he's asking that man, is asking us, do you want to be healed? Are you anxious for a change? Uh, there's a story in the Bible uh, of a man who was, was, was called a rich young ruler. Uh, this rich young ruler had a great deal of power, great deal of wealth, wealth excuse me. Uh, and, and, and he came to Jesus asking some questions, some eternal questions about eternal life, uh, about being obedient to the law uh, and how he had been obedient uh, to every 
uh, iota uh, of the law, but Jesus said, yes, you have, but one thing you lack. Jesus said, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor, and then you can enter the kingdom of heaven. This man walked away sadly because he was not willing to do what the Lord said. He was willing to remain in the plight that he was in. And again, it was a good plight from an earthly standpoint. He was rich, had power, but he didn't have the kingdom of God. And what we notice from that story is that not all stories in the Bible or in the New Testament end on a happy note. But as we move forward in this text, we'll see that this story ends, my friends, on the happy note. Because the fourth thing we take note of is the healing of this man. And when we note, take note of the healing of this man, we see that, that Jesus, as we read verses 6 and 7, broke through the pretense of the man's mind and helped him to see what he really wanted and what he really needed. Uh, and that ultimately led to his healing. Jesus told the man, you need to make an effort by simply standing up and stop waiting for an angel because the agent of your healing is here. The agent of your healing is me, the one that you are speaking to. You know, often uh, the hardest part or the hardest thing in life is to make a start, is to make or take that first step. And this is where we find this man and this is where many of you find yourself. When Jesus asked, uh, do you want to be in a place where you have greater mental health than wholeness? Do you want to be in a place of greater emotional stability? Do you want to be in a better financial situation? Do you want uh, to be in a better spiritual situation? Jesus, just like he said to this man, he is saying to us, in order to make a fresh start, you've got to be willing to take that first step. Taking the first step is often the most difficult thing to do. Uh, many of you are wanting to break a habit, but you're saying, I'll wait until tomorrow. There are many of you who are wanting, you've been saying for years, uh, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to finish my degree, or uh, I'm going to start my degree program, but you keep saying, I'll wait for uh, another season. But then uh, there are many of you who are saying, I'm going to live life on a higher level. I'm going to live better. But you say, not right now. Jesus is asking you that same question. When do you want to start? When do you want to take that first step? When do you want to be made whole? C.S. Lewis, in his autobiography that is entitled Surprised by Joy, says that there is a gift that Christ will often give us, and that is those who, he says, who carry their share of the load, who take ownership of their situation, will experience and receive the joy of God. And that is what C.S. Lewis is talking about in Surprised by Joy. He says, there was a wonderful and fine insight that comes when we take Jesus at his word. When we take Jesus at his word, C.S. Lewis says that we will be surprised by the joy that we receive from Jesus. This man, uh, it says, picked up his mat, and just like everyone else, uh, he experienced the joy of being healed, of being made whole by the Lord. My friends, you can be surprised by this same joy as well, but you've got to answer that question. Do I want to be made whole? Do I want to be healed uh, in the way or responding in the way that Jesus would want you to respond. Your healing is available. Your deliverance is available. Uh, your restoration is available. And ultimately, we want you to know your salvation is available when you take ownership of your situation and give your heart to Christ. The Bible says, uh, as it relates to God, that you will find him when you search for him with all of your heart. And the reason why is this, He's already looking for you. Jesus was looking for this man. It was not a chance encounter. It was a providential encounter, and the man was made whole. God has a providential encounter in store for you, and when you meet God, know that God will make you whole, and God will restore you again. Uh, it's been some time since I did this on Wednesday night. I do it regularly during our Sunday morning worship, but I have not extended on Wednesday night after the study of the word an opportunity for you 
to give your heart to Christ and to give your life to Jesus. Uh, if you feel so led to do that, we would love for you to email us. Let us know that you have given your heart to Christ. You have confessed your sins and received Christ into your life. Send us an email. Uh, we want to reach out to you. We want to pray with you. Uh, we want to help you to find a church uh, in your local area if you're at a distance from us. But if you're close, we would love to have you to become a member, not only of the kingdom of God, but a member uh, of First Baptist Church, North Tulsa. I also will say that if you are already a believer uh, in Jesus Christ and you live in the Tulsa area, we would love for you to come and visit. Uh, if you are looking for a church home, uh, we are a wonderful church that loves the Lord and we will love you the same way that Jesus loves you. So we invite you to be uh, a member of our church. Come and join us on worship each and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, here at 1414 North Greenwood. Uh, continue to view us uh, virtually uh, and enjoy our worship services. We certainly, my friends, would love to have you. Uh, again, I put in a, a plug for you to continue to give to our ministry. Uh, there are a number of ways and a number of levels by which you can give and platforms. Thank you so much for your kindness and for your generosity uh, as we take whatever you give and use it to further uh, and to advance the ministry uh, and the cause of Jesus Christ. Uh, and then lastly, uh, as you find yourself standing in need of being prayed for, we would love to receive your prayer request uh, so that we can pray for you, your family, maybe a friend, a co-worker. Uh, we know there are so many who need to be lifted up and encouraged, uh, and we stand ready to pray with and for you. Look forward to seeing you next week uh, here uh, for our virtual Bible study ministry here at First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, as we delve into the Word and as we seek to apply the Word to uh, our lives. God in heaven, your grace is so rich, your mercy is so wonderful. We thank you, Father, that you have come uh, to make us well, to heal, and to restore us. God, help us to know that, God, you are the one who can heal. You are the one who can restore. And help us, God, to receive what you have for us. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word. May your word enrich and bless uh, as we continue uh, our week, uh, as we continue our evening. And God, we look so forward to coming together again on next week and studying your word. Until then, bless each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.